and he really enjoyed having that. And I'm so glad that God put it on my heart to do that for him. I guess I had the best week with my son that I'd had in years that week. Um, we went along and he got to go to Chad's Hope um, the week after Christmas and check Chad's Hope out and just see, you know, if this is what he wanted to do because it was Christ-centered. And I found out that week that while he was in jail, he and another guy were leading Bible study in jail. Um, they had led a couple people to Christ, which reinforced what I already knew, that God will use the broken people. He will use those people to glorify Him and to honor Him. Um, just because my son wasn't able to surrender everything didn't mean God wouldn't use him. Um, we were able to have a conversation a year before about his salvation. So I knew through all these overdose, overdoses that, you know, he had that, he had given himself to God. He had accepted Christ as Savior. So there was some peace in that. But this week that he came home, after he got out of jail, it was the best week ever. We went to Chad's Hope. He got to visit there. He got to talk to some of the guys and um, was gonna go there the week after New Year's. And we went home on that week on New Year's Day. We went bowling. We had dinner, we had a great day and he ended up wanting to go to visit his dad that night on, on New Year's Day. And his dad dropped him off at 1230. And I remember standing at the front door as he waved his dad by and standing behind him thinking, you know, I'm so glad he's home. I'm glad God let him come home. Because there's hope. He's gonna go to Chad's Hope. Everything's gonna work out. And we had had the conversation that week that, you know, there are two things that are going to happen if you don't change your life. You're either going to die or you're going to end up in jail for the rest of your life. And he said, you know, Mom, I know that. I know. And every time he would overdose, I would say, Brendan, God is not done with you yet. You have a purpose. You have a story. God's not done with you yet. And so I went to bed the night of New Year's Day and I woke up to go to work the next morning. It was a Saturday and he was scheduled to go to Chad's Hope that following Monday. And the first thing I did was go downstairs and get really angry because he had been sleeping on my couch and there were no blankets, there were nothing. And I thought, you know, here we go. We're back to our old behaviors again. You're out hanging with the wrong people. You're out doing the wrong thing. But for some reason, as I turned to go out the door, I looked at the bathroom door downstairs and I could see the light under it. So then I felt guilty and I'm like, well, he's here, you know. And I went and knocked on the door to check on him and nobody answered. And I knocked on the door again and still no answer. So I turned the handle to go in to make sure he was okay. And I had a hard time pushing the door open. But I could see him laying on the floor, not answering me when I said, Brendan, call his name. And I couldn't get into him to even see if he was breathing because all his weight was behind the door. And I just remember thinking, God, please, no, please. But he had been dead for about four hours when the coroner got there. And as hard as it was to see my son on life support, to see him in jail, to drag him out of a car, not breathing, to see them pull him out in a body bag with me begging to just give him one more kiss was more than anybody should ever have to, to go through as a mother with a child suffering from addiction. <laughs> 